Hi everybody, this is Mr. Raed and Nusayrat. Today, inshallah, we will talk about lesson 3.3 from grade 12 mathematics, advanced term one. Lesson name, computation of derivatives, the power rule. In this lesson, we have two learning objectives. The first one is find the derivative of a function at a given point. The second one is use differentiation rules and higher derivatives in solving problems. Also, we have some keywords, derivative, the tangent line, higher order derivatives, second degree polynomial. We will start with this example. Determine the values of x for which the tangent line to y equal x cubed minus 3x plus 1 is horizontal. So he told me here in this question that the tangent line is horizontal. What's the meaning of that? The meaning of that is the slope m, slope m must be equal to zero. Slope equal zero. Also, I know the slope is the derivative of function. Now, what's the derivative of y? It's 3x squared minus 3. So 3x squared minus 3 equals 0 because the tangent is horizontal and m equals 0. When I solve this, equa this, this equation, I will take minus 3 to another side. So 3x squared equals 3. After that, divide by 3, divide by 3. So x squared equals 1. That means x equal plus minus radical 1, which is x equal plus minus 1. So here we have two values for x make this tangent horizontal. <laughs> if you mind the values of x for which the tangent line, tangent line to y equal x cubed minus 3x plus 1 intersects the x-axis at a 45 degree angle, assuming that the angle is measured counterclockwise. What's the meaning of that? Now, let me discuss with you what's the meaning of the angle is measured counterclockwise. As we know, we have two axes, x-axis and y-axis. This is the x-axis. In this question, he tell me that the tangent line making an, make an angle measure the counterclockwise with x-axis. If the tangent line like this, this is the tangent line, and the angle with x-axis measured counterclockwise, it's coming like this from here. This is counterclockwise. This is the theta. And this is the tangent, tangent line. Here we have m tangent, slope of tangent line, slope of tangent, must be equal tangent of theta, the tan of theta. Now, theta in my question is 45. So theta here, it's 45 degree. From this, I can say m equal tan 45, which is 1. Also, I know slope is the derivative of y, which is 3x squared minus 3. Now, I have the slope of this tangent by two ways. First one from the tangent of theta, the second one from derivative of y. So, I will take 3x squared minus 3 equal 1 and solve this equation take minus 3 to another side so 3x squared equal 1 plus 3 that means 3x squared equal 4 so x squared equal 4 over 3 now what about x x equal plus minus radical 4 over 3 give you plus minus 2 over radical 3, which is the same as plus minus 2 radical 3 
power of three, and you can find this value by your calculator. So the tangent line, which makes uh, angle 45 counterclockwise with x axis, I have two values for this section for this x equal 2 radically 3 over 3 or x equal minus 2 radically 3 over 3. In this example, determine the values of x for which the slope of the tangent line to y equal x to the power 2 over 3 does not exist. So the slope of the tangent does not exist. What's the meaning of that? Now, first of all, I will find the slope m equal y prime, which is 2 over 3, x to the power 2 over 3 minus 1, it's negative 1 over 3. So it's equal 2 over 3, x to the power 1 over 3. Now, this is the value of slope. This value does not exist when x equals 0, because the value which makes the denominator equal 0, it's x equals 0. For that, I will take 3x to the power 3, 1 over 3, sorry, equals 0. That means x to the power 1 over 3 equals 0. That means x equals 0. So, slope of the tangent does not exist. at x equal zero. Now I have another question uh, now for you. Determine the values of x for which the slope of the tangent line to y equal absolute value x minus five does not exist. You have three minutes to finish this task. Please pause your recording while you uh, solve this question. After that, we'll back again, Sean. Okay, now let me check with you the solution for this question. My question here is y equal absolute value of x minus x minus five. This function, as we uh, know before, uh, we can write it as x minus five equal this wise function, x minus five when x is greater than or equal five, or 5 minus x for x less than 5. So this is the function y. If I show you now the, the graph for this function, it's coming like this. Here 5. coming like this. So as we see here from the graph, at this point, I have a corner. And we know if we have a corner for the, for the function, that means the derivative not exist. Because the derivative not exist, so the tangent, the tangent, I, I don't have a tangent here at this point. That means the slope is not exist because the tangent is not exist. Also, if I have a derivative of y for this piecewise function, give me the first one minus uh, plus one, sorry, for x greater than five and minus one for x less than five. Now, what about x equal five? The derivative not exist. Because the derivative from right side for at five, x equal five give me plus one, and from left side give me minus one. So the derivative from right not equal to the, the, the derivative from left. That means the derivative at x equal five not exist. So the slope of the tangent not exist or does not exist. at x equal five. 
find all values of x for which the tangent lines to y equal x cubed plus 2x plus 1 and y equal x to the power 4 plus x cubed plus 3 are parallel. So here the tangent lines are parallel. First of all, I will name the first one by y1 equal x cubed plus 2x plus 1 and the second one by y2 equal x to the power 4 plus x cubed plus 3. I will find m1, the slope of the uh, tangent for first uh, function, which is y1 prime, which is 3x squared plus 2. And m2 equal y2 prime, which is 4x cubed plus 3x squared. Now, because the tangent lines are parallel, that means the slope are equal. So m1 equal m2. So 3x squared plus 2 equal 4x cubed plus 3x squared. As we see here, we can cancel 3x squared from both sides. So 4x cubed equal 2. That means x cubed equal 2 over 4, which is 1 over 2. So x equal cubic radical of 1 over 2. We can write as 1 over cubic radical of 2. In this example, he asked me about find the second degree polynomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c such that f of 0 equal minus 2, f prime of 0 equal 2, and f double, f double prime of 0 equal 3. I will start from uh, let the function f of x equal ax squared plus bx plus c. As I see here in the condition, I have condition for f and condition for f prime and condition for f double prime. I have f of x, so I will find now f the f prime of x, which is 2ax plus b and f double prime of x, which is 2a. After that, I will use my condition here. So I will start from the first one, which is f of 0 equal negative 2. That means the value of x equals 0 and the value of y equal negative 2. So negative 2 equal a times 0 squared, it's 0, plus b times 0, 0, plus c. So the value of c, it's negative 2. The second condition, f prime of 0 equal 2, I will use f prime now, so 2 equal 2a times 0, it's 0, plus b, that means b equal 2. The last condition, f double prime of 0 equal 3, give me that, 3 equal 2a. That means a equal 3 over 2. Okay, after I, I find the value of a, b, and c, I can write now the function f of x as ax squared, the value of a 3 over 2, so 3 over 2x squared, plus bx, b equal 2, so 2x plus 2x plus c, which is minus 2. Minus 2, I will write plus minus, I will put it minus directly. So here it's minus 2. So this is the function from second degree polynomial with these conditions. Find a general formula for the nth derivative f to the power n x nth derivative for function f of x, which is f of x equal 2 over x. Now, f of x, I will write it as 2x to the power negative 1. The first derivative is 2 times minus 1 x to the power minus 2, because minus 1 minus 1, it's minus 2. What about second derivative? Second derivative, I will keep 2 here. Minus 2 minus, times minus 1, it's 2, x to the power negative 3. 
F triple prime, it's two, negative three times two, it's negative six, x to the power negative four. What about the fourth derivative? The fourth derivative is two times negative four, negative six, it's a 24, x to the power negative five. I will find also the fifth derivative, which is two times negative five times 24, it's negative 120, x to the power negative six, because minus five minus one, it's negative six. Okay. I will continue like this up to nth derivative. Now I must find general form for nth derivative. I will look for the first five derivatives which I found. As I see here, all of my derivatives start from two. So two, it's available in all derivatives. That means the nth derivative also, the general form also have two. Now, the first derivative, there is a constant, minus one, second derivative two, triple, uh, third derivative minus six, fourth derivative 24, fifth derivative minus, minus 120. So I, I have the, the sign of, of numbers started from negative, after that positive, negative, positive, this idea or this uh, different in size, I, I in size, sorry, I can uh, generalize it in the form of minus one to the power n or minus one to the power n plus one or minus one to the power any term of n. So I will check first of all minus one to the power n. The first derivative one, so minus one to the power one, it's negative, it's correct. Minus one to the power two, it's positive. So here it's positive, good. Third derivative, minus one to power three, it's negative. And here it's negative, it's okay. What about the fifth derivative? Minus one to power five, it's minus one, so it's okay. So this generalize is okay. The generalization is good for these signs. After that, I will go to the numbers. So first derivative one, second derivative two, third derivative six, fourth derivative 24, fifth derivative 120. If I go to six derivative, it's 700, uh, uh, 720. If I go to uh, uh, the uh, seventh derivative, it's 5040. This is the n factorial. You can check. This is the n factorial because factorial of one is one, factorial of two is two, factorial of three is six, factorial of four is 24, factorial of five is 120. Also, x, it's available in all terms, so I will put x, but the power is changing. So the first derivative minus two, second derivative minus three, third derivative minus four, after that minus five, minus six. So there is minus and the order of derivative, I must add one of it because the fifth derivative is six here. So five plus one and the four is five plus, uh, the, the four is four plus one, which is five. Number three is the three plus one, which is four. And this is the general uh, formula for the nth derivative for this function. Find the area of the triangle bounded by x equals zero and y equals zero, and the tangent line to y equal one over x at x equal one. Uh, first of all, I must find the equation of the tangent line. So I will start from the slope, which is y prime, derivative of y equal one over x, y equal one over x, it's the same as x to the power minus one, so minus one x to the power negative two is the derivative. Uh, now the tangent uh, at x equal one, so slope equal negative one, one to the power minus one, which is minus one. The equation of the uh, tangent line is y equal m x minus a plus f of a. So y equal, the slope is minus one, x minus a, the value of a is one, plus f of a, f of one, f of one, it's one over one, which is one. So here, one. 
after I uh, simplify this uh, equation, give me minus x plus one plus one, which is y equal negative x plus two. So this is the equation of the tangent line. So my triangle, which I look for the area of it, is bounded by the tangent line and x equals zero and y equals zero. What's the meaning of x equals zero? x equals zero is y axis and y equals zero is x axis. So I need to sketch the graph of this line as I see here in this picture. Uh, this is the, my function y equal one over x, and this is in red, uh, the red line is the uh, tangent line at x equal one at this point. Where is my triangle? My triangle is coming here because it's the area is bounded by the tangent line, x axis and y axis. So I look for this area. Now, I can, how can I draw the, the, the tangent line? You can take x equals zero and find the value of y, which is two, and you can take y equals zero and find the value of x, which is two also, the x-intercept and y-intercept. After that, you can find the area. What about the area now, the area of a triangle? It's half base times height, which is half times. The base of a triangle from zero to two is two, and the height from zero to two is two also, so the final result is two. So the area of this triangle is two. Now we'll make a small recap for this lesson. First of all, don't forget the angle measured as a counterclockwise. If the angle measured as counterclockwise, as I see here in this picture, that means m equal tan theta. Also, if the angle is measured clockwise from this, from this direction, this is clockwise, the, uh, the tangent here is tan of pi minus theta because the, tan, the, the, the slope of, of tangent line is the tan for this angle. Okay. Uh, also, uh, don't forget the equation of the tangent line, which we talked about it before. It's y equal m x minus a plus f of a, where f m equal f prime of a. And also, don't forget the uh, nth uh, derivative uh, f to the power n of x, d and y by dx and the nth derivative of any function. Thank you very much. Uh, we will soon uh, we will see inshallah in uh, next.